All right, welcome back to DHR. We're going to discuss a recent Court of Criminal Appeals decision here in Texas. It's the LAL versus the state of Texas. Deals with vehicle searches. And uh, what it tries to do is clear up some vagueness from a prior decision in the Wade versus state of Texas decision. And what we're talking about is the ability or opportunity for officers to search a vehicle. Yeah? So in this decision here, um, the suspect's refusal to consent, right? So what happened is the officer... Don't, had, don't, don't stop the video. I see you. See you. Listen to this stuff. It's important. <laughs> it might help you. Yes. But the, uh, the suspect, Marlon Lal, refused to allow the officer to search his vehicle. You know, the officer wanted to search his vehicle. He said no. <clears throat> and so uh, coupled with the fact that he was acting nervous, the officer went ahead and searched his vehicle. And, and one of the components of his reasonable suspicion that he articulated was that the suspect, or in this case, the defendant Lal, refused or to consent, right? He mm -hmm. not, and it wound go up going, you know, to the Court of Criminal Appeals and they said that can't be the basis to develop reasonable suspicion. Is someone's refusal to cooperate or refusal to um allow an officer to search their vehicle or acting nervous, things like that. In other words, standing on your Fourth Amendment rights cannot be a reason to then develop reasonable suspicion to search someone's vehicle. Yes. In other, in other words, contempt of cop. Right. So you have to have to, actual probable cause is what the court <clears throat> is looking for. Now, um, that helps clarify, you know, the, the prior confusion that kind of existed because what officers were doing was they were inserting um, a refusal to consent along with acting nervous with a litany of other behaviors exhibited by suspects at the scene to justify um, searching a vehicle to develop reasonable suspicion. Well, really what you have to have is reasonable suspicion to then call a drug dog, right? And then they call a drug dog to the scene and if it hits on your vehicle, then they can search your vehicle. And, and that kind of comes from the Florida versus Harris case, uh, which went to the US Supreme Court. And what that did is essentially convert um, drug dogs to walking search warrants. <laughs> Right, because yeah. that's what they are. They're four-legged search warrants. So if a drug dog hits on your vehicle, well, then they can search your vehicle. I, I don't, I don't agree with that, but that's kind of the standard that's employed right now. And I, I, I think eventually they're going to probably reverse that decision, but it's going to require you know a case where a dog hits on a vehicle where the dog clearly had no reason to. And then it will corrupt the reliability of, of drug dogs in general. Wasn't that case where didn't they um, pretty much conduct their business, the law enforcement business, and then call the drug dog? Yes. Yeah, they extended the, the traffic stop after the ticket was written, after the, everything was given back. Right, but you can't really do that though. That that there's actually a case on that. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's the Rodriguez versus United States case. Yes, yeah, that that's one of the things we should guard against. If yeah, you're going to you, get a dog. In fact, get the dog out there right away. Right. Yeah, right away, and and you can walk around the while you're writing the ticket. The the officer, the canine officer, can canine handler, I should say, could walk his canine officer around, and then you could establish probable cause that way. Right, but the Rodriguez versus <laughs> United States case is what basically told police officers you cannot extend the length of a traffic yeah, stop exactly. to try to get a drug dog out there. Once you stop somebody for speeding, you write them a ticket and uh, you give them back their driver's license, then you say, hey, I'd like to get a drug dog out here now. All right, but just to That's be concise about no, this. No, no. That's a no, no. The Court of Appeals should not have considered appellant's lawful refusal to consent to the search of his truck when determining if the facts of this case gave rise to reasonable suspicion. Instead, the Court of Appeals should have considered the facts outside of appellant's refusal to determine if those facts gave rise to reasonable suspicion, just as we did in the Wade case, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Court of Appeals considered appellant's lawful refusal to consent as a factor in its reasonable suspicion analysis, we need not reach appellant's second ground for review, and instead we vacate the judgment of the Court of Appeals and remand the case so that the Court of Appeals may have an opportunity to conduct a reasonable suspicion analysis without considering appellant's... <laughs> 
mm-hmm. refusal to mm-hmm. consent. Yes, I know. It's boring. It's law, but it's your job. You got to know these things. It's very important. So I, I just get on Google Scholar. That's all you got to do. You sit down, get on Google, Sorry. type in the word scholar, and then the Google Scholar page will come up. Click uh, Texas, then click Courts. And uh, or click court decisions, then Texas, and it'll take you and then just put in Lau versus the state of Texas. You can read this for yourself. And, and it's very important for a police officer to understand that when you articulate reasonable suspicion in your <clears throat> offense reports, it's necessary to include things that are actual crimes, actual cr- criminal conduct an actual behavior that results in reasonable suspicion. It can't just be, well, he was nervous and he told me I couldn't search his car and I'm, I had a hunch that he was doing something wrong. That's actually from the Wade case, right? Where the game warden mm-hmm. searched this guy's yeah. truck based on the fact that he thought he was being lied to by the suspect. And the court was like, yeah, no, that doesn't get you there, buddy. Yeah. And they threw it out. So w- what the court is doing is actually tightening the reins of conduct that's indicative of reasonable suspicion of criminal behavior that will then necessitate um, the, the officer Terry frisking the suspect, right? Doing a Terry pat down. And then ultimately searching a vehicle, you know, requires n- proper reasonable suspicion to develop probable cause. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've heard uh, instructors and police officers say, well, reasonable suspicion is whatever I want it to be. And it is. It, it's not. Just, it is suspicion that is reasonable. <laughs> you, you must be able to articulate some reason for a stop or a search or, or whatever. The, even the general orders, though, for the Houston Police Department are vague. If you go to page 8, uh, 500-1, which is the general order here in Houston, that kind of articulates an officer's ability to search a vehicle, it says things like, the officer reasonably believes a search is necessary for the officer's own safety. And then in parentheses, it puts weapon. But we live in a state that recognizes your Second Amendment right to carry. Mm-hmm. Constitutional right? carry. So how how can your exercise of a constitutional right under the second amendment then be the basis for a police officer to search your vehicle right it would it, it just seems it's just, it's the same as uh, refusing to let him search wouldn't it i mean yeah. your fourth amendment right right so uh, i don't think one uh, amendment is more important than the others i think they're all equally valuable so if you're exercising your second amendment right to carry mm-hmm. a weapon exactly. I, I don't think the court can then translate that into well for the sake of officer safety we're going to let him search your vehicle because you may have had a weapon. Well, everybody has a weapon. We're a mm-hmm. constitutional carry state. And under the Constitution of the Second Amendment, you can carry that weapon. Mm-hmm. And that can't then be the basis for reasonable suspicion. But yes. in the department's own general orders, 500-1, they're saying, well, yes, it can form the basis of a reasonable search or reasonable suspicion to search the arm's length of your vehicle. And if anybody's been in a vehicle, arm's length in a vehicle is is anywhere in the vehicle, really, mm-hmm. except the trunk, right? Except when I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> my mom and dad's Pontiac. They could, they could hit you anywhere yeah, in that yeah, car. Yeah. <laughs> you have to walk over to one side of the car. Right. And so I guess what, my, what I suspect will be the next case the Court of Criminal Appeals has to address is, can someone's exercise of the Second Amendment be the basis of violating their Fourth Amendment rights? Mm-hmm. And so... I anticipate that will come in the future, but for now, officers under this Lowell versus state of Texas decision in the state of Texas, you need to have something better than he was nervous and he refused to uh, consent Mm -hmm. for my search to justify reasonable suspicion that your suspect is involved in a crime. That that, that doesn't get you there. It's not going to be enough. And under this decision, it's going to get thrown out. So you need to have articulable probable cause. And so understand your city ordinances, understand your uh, class C misdemeanors. Those will open the door to probable cause. Mm-hmm. And then honestly, it's a big reason why they exist mm-hmm. is so that an officer can use class C violations to then investigate further into a person's conduct. Mm-hmm. Although in, in Houston, we don't allow you know new traffic arrests without a supervisor's permission. Right? Yeah. So officers can't just go around snatching people up on new traffic in order to affect an assert, a search, an arrest. Mm-hmm. You know, it and, has to be yeah, that's that. a, They're really trying to get rid of those precursor stops. Right. So, yeah, so that would... All right, so hey, comment below. Uh, we look forward to your uh, comments in all of our videos. Um, and, you know, if you're a police officer right now, look, read the law. It's very important. Read those uh, courts of criminal appeals decisions. That's the criminal equivalent of the Supreme Court in Texas, right? We don't... We have 
people don't realize this, but in Texas, we have a Supreme Court, but that's only for civil and family cases. The CCA, the Court of Criminal Appeals, handles is the Supreme Court for all criminal cases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, read those CCA circulars as they come out. They're very important in being able to, well, do your job. And we'll look forward to you in the next video.